In the last video, we looked at the three ways how we can set flex basis. We said that we can set specific pixel values, relative percentage values, and the auto value. Now, so far, our flex basis in our whole Flexbox system, for that matter, is kind of um, the same thing as just setting some, um, some size in percentage or in... Um, depending on its uh, on its content values because when those elements have the space that they want to that they need to this is just behaving like a normal size and we never have some interesting challenge um, actually and that's not what flexbox is made for flexbox is actually made for the case when you don't have enough space and when you have to compete for space and when you have to distribute um, the space um, over several elements. So let's look at just that in this uh, second example here. Now, what we have here are two elements with a flex basis of auto, the red one and the yellow one, and we have a third one that has a fixed um, pixel size. Now, as you can see here, you can use auto not only for text, obviously, but also for other elements. Here we just put in some um, equal sized squares and obviously when there's enough space the yellow element just gets as big as it needs to fit in those three elements. Now let's start to grow these elements a little bit. Um, let's get some more text in here. Sorry, okay. And let's get more elements in here. And so far we still have just the same behavior we had before. All of those elements can fit um, their content inside without any problem. This element can be as big as it wants to be and everybody is happy. Now, this starts to change now. What you can see, What's happening here is those elements are suddenly no squares anymore. And that's happening because the yellow element is telling them, um, listen, I'm having space troubles. You cannot take up as much space as you want to. And when I do this even more, I think I did one thing that I did not intend to. Yeah, I made one mistake. Um, I wanted to have the default shrink value of one for the red element as well. Now you can see, let's just repeat that quickly. Let's remove a couple of those. You can see that the red box is also changing, obviously, and also the text is changing. However, for um, normal visual elements, the yellow element can kind of tell them to become smaller for a text element a little bit um, something else is happening. Now the text element has less width to um, to use, but the font or something, uh, other properties of the text, they don't change. So you always have the same font. You don't want your font to change based on some, um, some other elements changing. But the element um, as a whole is still getting smaller because it doesn't have enough space. So you might ask the question now, what size are they actually having and why are they having exactly this size and now this is actually the kind of the core of the flex basis thing and also the core of flexbox in a sense that flexbox is calculating this flex basis for all of those elements once they cannot have um, the space that they want to have and we can see by this middle element that um there are definitely two kind of criteria that are um, that are considered for this calculation. One thing is how how many uh, content elements or how big our content actually is. But if this was the only thing that we would consider, then we would still um, have square elements and they would still be as big as they want to be. You can see that when you remove the shrink. Uh, I'm sorry, not on the on the item, but on the container. So if the shrink is set to zero, it's not considering um, the other elements, it's only considering its content elements. And now it's we are kind of back in the 
same scenario where we were before, where those elements just take up as much space as they need. But that's not the default case. And that's not what you what you normally tend to do. What you normally tend to do is to let Flexbox figure out how much space those elements can have. And for that, it is for once considering the content. And the other thing that is considering is the other elements um, around me in my container. So this is the reason why um, those elements have the sizes that they have. What size that precisely is, you don't really know that. Um, you just know that this element will calculate something based on its content. The more content it has, the more weight this element kind of has. The same thing goes for this. We can easily test that by removing those elements. No, that's not what I wanted to do. By removing some of those elements. And with each element that we remove, the yellow element kind of has less weight. And for that, it is allowed to take up less space in the container. And the same thing is happening when we set a different flex basis, uh, a specific flex basis, obviously. When we set this to 50 pixels, now the other elements are allowed to use up more space. And so we always have this game of Flexbox um, kind of figuring out what is the weight of the particular elements and how much space based on that weight are they allowed um, to, to take up. And this weight is uh, kind of represented in this um, flex basis value. 